Vig Nash says, I've been playing around with Copilot for Microsoft 365 for quite some time, and I just have a quick question in regards to Copilot for Microsoft 365. Let's say I'm using Copilot for Word, and I ask Copilot to create a document for me, and I review it, and I click on Regenerate because I'm not happy about the result that it created. So my question is, how many times can I ask Copilot to create new document for me? Is there a limit for that? For instance, can I click on it? for five times and it will give me a different content every time. And beyond that, it will return back to content which created for me in the first time. So please let me know the limit here. Okay, so there is some limits around Copilot. There is only sort of so many times in terms of you can get it to boost it in a day, like as a, in a hundred times, there's a, there's was previously limit um, of 300 in terms of chat. And I mean, a lot of those limits though are fast changing. So don't let that actually hold you back because as quick as we've got a limit, they're often being taken away. But my thing here I would say is it's great to do the regenerate when it comes to Copilot where you kind of go, I'm not happy with that result. But my issue is usually I see that people aren't necessarily creating the right prompt in the first place. They're not engineering the prompt or recreating it with something a little different to dive in. Um, I, you know, I recently had one where I said, you know, what are the weaknesses? I was showing people what are the weaknesses Copilot went, well, that didn't give me anything of value to help me. I went, instead, I changed my question and went, what are the weaknesses and how can I address them and put them in a table? Now that gave me some really good responses that I could go, well, oh, this is something I can do that's actually actionable rather than just show me the weaknesses. So just sometimes when we're asking our questions, we have to really consider well, what is it that you're asking? Because if it's not giving you the right result, you probably haven't given it enough information. But, you know, if it's your personal assistant, I'm not going to just say, can you create a new Word document for me? They just sit there and go, okay. Well, if you're just hitting refresh, well, what do you want? <laughs> I mean, if you think of like uh, the, the way that chat GPT works is that if you've yeah. regenerated, I think twice, then it mm -hmm. comes back and it, you can't just regen without mm -hmm. yeah. selecting keywords, it something something, else. which is giving it yeah. refiners. It's adding to that, but you're exactly yeah. right. I mean, the beauty of the uh, generative AI is that you get that it's not the result that you wanted. You can then ask for it to build on top of that request you've already made. It's retaining that in that session, the knowledge of what you asked for. And you could say, no, that's not it exactly. What I'm looking for is this, or you know, like this way, this format, I need this question answered. And you can continue to refine that and get different results each time. So yeah. I, you know, it's a, if you're just clicking regenerate, I mean, I, I, I go back to kind of the uh, age old question, like what's the definition of insanity? Um, doing something expecting again, again, result. and again, the same thing, repeating yourself, but yeah. expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. Or I know that I've got this document here, point it to, I actually want more information that comes from this source, whatever that source may be. Maybe it's from, you know, um, Microsoft dot com you know, go to here or support support.microsoft.com or you know there are different things you can point it to it could be your um a particular document or a presentation or a what to try and get it to give you the right kind of a response that you actually need and there, there's lots of other ways that you can kind of refine it as you said the regenerate is really just about it rewording things a little bit differently but even then it go do you want it in a formal tone a casual tone as a poem as a like yeah there's if you're so not giving it any additional information, right. If you're not feeding new information, yeah. it's it's not really going to be much different from the wrong result that you got initially. Yeah, yeah. But it's just a matter of what, so what Chris, Christy is mentioning before is when you do ask for something different, um, a lot of the tips that I give people is I'll look at something and I'll be like, why is it not answering this question or why is it not giving me this thing? And that kind of clues you in on what you should be asking it for. So say, for example, I say, you know, create me a Word document that about this topic and it's missing a specific thing where it's not focused on what I want it to be focused on, then I think when you drill into that, you can think, what is it that I'm missing? And either add that as, you know, like Christy mentioned earlier, as she said, you know, do this and then and then also give me this other information. So add it as a secondary piece of information or simply switch. So one thing to consider is that switch completely. And so saying, write me a paper about this, instead say, provide me information about this other thing, you know, focused on this other topic, 
um, that you're missing and hopefully it'll give you a better answer. But yeah, I mean, there, there are some limitations in there of how many times you can do things and how often it'll respond. And um, if you get to a certain point, um, it, it it won't like stop you forever. What it'll do is say, you know, I think you're asking the same thing too many times. Maybe, you know, take a few minutes and think about what you need. And what will happen is it'll actually give you like a timeout where it'll say, you know, you, you can't with a timeout. a certain amount of time. But I think of how you just phrased that. It's like, it's like, I want you to go to your room, young man, and think <laughs> about what you've done. Take a time out. You're pushing out. me too hard. You're pushing me too hard. I need you to go take a break and think about this a little more before you come back. So I don't think it's that it's a complete limit of like we're shutting you down now. It's more just maybe get a little bit more focused about what you need. Yeah. It's funny you say all that because I, whenever I'm working with that, I'm thinking of my daughter when she was three and her favorite word was why. And so you'd answer and she will, well, why? And then you'd you get three wise. Why? <laughs> Don't ask me again the why. Yes. I, said, I used to give I go three. I'd count them down. And they knew that they had three whys. After that, they were done. <laughs> but That's you know, really the other thing I would role. say is, yeah, the other one I would say is sometimes um I would tell my audience, and, and this is also some of the soft skills that people will sometimes need to know, because when you're crafting an email and you're giving instructions to an employee or you're searching even and you're trying to find information to have a result come back, it doesn't matter what it is, whether you're doing prompt engineering or, you know, there's a lot of things there around how we actually phrase. And that can make a real difference. And what are the verbs that you need? Not only that as part of a, a user behavior when we're working with Copilot is even things like starting with, uh, for example, I was working with some knowledge managers and say, I'm a knowledge manager. My audience is Perfect. a group of people that know nothing about this particular topic and I need to discuss or I want to put in here or I'm, I'm a nuclear scientist talking to my scientist students or I'm a nuclear scientist talking to my CEO and I've got to put it in this kind of language. So you've even got to get it to the point where what's the role and what's the context and what's the output? How do you want it? Um, you've got to make it much bigger and not also, and also what are the things like what are the inclusive words maybe that you want to are you doing it with empathy are you being friendly are you being do you know there are a lot of different inclusive words that you can also bring into your prompting because if it's not giving you the right results unfortunately usually uh, the good proportion of the time it's it is the individual then it comes down to what are the limitations around copilot understanding what those limitations actually are because we sometimes are asking things that are truly just not available not at this point anyway. So we got to understand how far we can sometimes go with the technology as to our expectations. It is growing exponentially, like it's growing really fast. It's got a lot of power behind it, but there are still limitations there, guys. Well, and part of it too is that, especially now with the ability to go and create a co-pilot for a SharePoint site, you know, you, you're getting these smaller mm -hmm. and smaller containers then it really comes down to, are you asking questions, the right questions for the body of knowledge that's captured in this container? Uh, mm -hmm. And so that you just, you have to be more aware of where you are in the environment. Like, is this even the place to, am I gonna get the right result? No matter how good your prompt engineering skills are, you know, if you're asking in the wrong place where it doesn't have that data. Yeah, and things could be turned off if they're asking in Word. And it might say, we're not allowing you to look at this, 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 and I'm not getting the right result back. It's probably because, you know, maybe it's been set up that you're not allowed to actually even look at that particular content to write it. So, yeah. Because you're in a timeout in your room. <laughs> Can you ask Copilot whether or not you have access to something? <laughs> well, it I have gotten results back where it says, like, I don't have that data, where I asked for something, yeah. like it said, I don't have this, that, that data. Um, Mark, so. I don't think it gives you the, you don't have permissions to that content as such. It no. doesn't give you those kind of results. No. no. Right. It'll be a security it trend. It will talk about what it's now. So, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. a, a couple of the other better questions than how many times can I simply click try again would be one, how many characters do I get in one single prompt? I've seen some of Sharon's prompts and they're pretty freaking long. You know, yeah. how many characters long can a prompt be? Are we limited to 255, 512, 1024? You know, can it be forever? Way over that. Well, I, with Copilot, I know Chat GPT, I know expanded again. Um, I mean, it was something like you were 
limited initially uh, to like an article of like eight to twelve hundred words, and now it's expanded to where you could have essentially like a, like a hundred and twenty page document. You know, so a lot of content you feed in. I don't know what the limitations are with Copilot, but sixteen thousand characters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I take every one of those. Right. Yep. Yeah. Same. And the other. I, as much as, <laughs> much as I hit the end. I I've hit the, the buffer words. It was. It said nope. Well, let me too tell much. you my life story. <laughs> <laughs> I put. I put in. Um, you'll have there. I put in the link to some of those the features around Copilot and what are those limitations when you've got the subscription for Copilot for three six five. But what you also need to know is that underneath the three six five inside Word, each one of those you can also go and have a look at what are the limitations for Word and PowerPoint and Excel and so each one of those has limitations as a product too. So mm -hmm. it's not just that overarching how many characters you know character limit of you know up to eighteen thousand characters so it depends it precise is 16,000 but you know when you go up the overarching is um 18,000 on the character limit so um yeah each one and then within word and what are the sort of things that you can ask because it's not actually about and you know another thing that people will do is they think that they're going to be able to do something like if you're in PowerPoint, remove the notes from this page. Well, I'm not going to do something that's down in the, the minute kind of detail. It's very easy. They're right there in notes, just select and delete. What they want to do is something much bigger and make it like it's going to be client ready. You know, where they're going, those sorts of things are remove all of the notes and take out all of the comments and all these things. So it's actually ready to give to someone. They want to do bigger, not just not just the individual little commands. So it's like also what are you asking in terms of your result? So and each application has its own personality. I'm just gonna warn you now. It does. Like as you, it does. As, as you know you start to use Copilot from 365 and you use it within each of the applications, they each kind of perform a little bit differently, which has been super fun. So you kind of get to know their personalities. That's why well, Sway, is, separate Sway is so smug and it's just wrong. <laughs> I mean, you know so it's powerpoint powerpoint is like powerpoint's yeah, like it. yeah i'm not gonna do that yeah the powerpoint says no no mm -mm. <laughs> i will no. i'll put the link in for word what the limitations and what do you need to know about like copilot in word for example I'll put that in. I think too. we're still we're still stringing applications together too. I mean, there's a lot. I think there's you know down the road, like Christine mentioned, it's growing, it's getting better. There's all you know, it's getting smarter, it's getting more fully featured. Um, but I think you know another thing to consider is the whole idea of stringing together things. So often I'll use multiple applications to build what I need um, using the right applications for the right job, and then grabbing that information and then putting it into the the, another application. So maybe I'll use ChatGPT to build out an outline. I'll use that outline and put it into Word and then I'll refine it a little bit and then I'll use Word to create a PowerPoint deck. Um, so it's kind of stringing all of that together beyond just the prompting. It's also using the tools for what they're intended so that by the time you get to the end, um, you know, you've really used each of them to, to their full feature. Yeah, those suggestions, some of them are just gold, you know. Have you got any further? Inspire me. If you haven't ever clicked the inspire me, there's some pretty cool stuff under the inspire me, you know, button that can go, oh, that's a good idea. Because often we don't know what we should or could potentially ask as well. Big Nash, you started out by saying you had a quick question. It's, no <laughs> such, it's, no question. it's not met with a quick answer. It's yeah. a fun <laughs> topic. But now you know. And knowing is half, knowing the, battle. Is half the battle. Thanks, G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel a theme. I don't, I just don't say it on purpose. I'm a holdout. <laughs>